Welcome and Merry Christmas. This year with COVID is obviously very different. Christmas is going to be very different this year. And so we've had to be creative. We've had to use online technology. And today we thought we would make a video that can be viewed because not all of us can attend church this year. So we thought we'd make a video with music and carols, with readings and with a reflection and with pictures of the five churches in our parish. Covid cannot stop Christmas and so we still celebrate the child born all these years ago in Bethlehem, bringing joy and hope to the world and who still comes today and still transforms lives. So we come as we are and wherever we are and we offer our worship to Christ. Lord, come close to us as we come close to you. Let us pray. Lord God, we thank you for Christmas, for decorations that brighten up our, our homes, for lights shining in the darkness, for family and keeping in touch and the joy of togetherness. We know that this Christmas will be a different Christmas, but we pray that something of the peace and the goodwill that the angels sang about will be in our homes and in our hearts and that the joy of the Christ child born in the manger be ever with us as Emmanuel. Lord Jesus born in Bethlehem in a world that has forgotten how to rejoice give us joy. In a world looking for explanations give us a sign. In a world of fear and uncertainty, give us peace. And 
in a world where we wear masks, reveal yourself to us. For we and all the world need a saviour. And so come to us this Christmas that we may rejoice in you, not just at Christmas, but forever. Amen. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest, as men rejoice when dividing the plunder. For as in the day of Midian's defeat, you have shattered the yoke that burdens them, the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor. Every warrior's boot used in battle and every garment rolled in blood will be destined for burning, will be fuel for the fire. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. <laughs> from the Good News Bible. God promises a ruler from Bethlehem. The Lord says, Bethlehem, Ephrathah, you are one of the smallest towns in Judah, but out of you I will bring a ruler for Israel, whose family line goes back to ancient times. So the Lord will abandon his people to the enemies until the one who is to give birth has her son. Then his fellow countrymen who are in exile will be reunited with their own people. When he comes, he will rule his people with the strength that comes from the Lord and with the majesty of the Lord God himself. His people will live in safety 
because people all over the earth will acknowledge his greatness and he will bring peace. When the Assyrians invade our country and break through our defences, we will send our, strength, our strongest leaders to fight them. angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went on to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favoured. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favour with God. You will be with child and give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age and she who was said to be barren is in her sixth month. For nothing is impossible with God. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May it be to me as you have said. Then the angel left her. This is the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. Sweet little Jesus boy, born long time ago.
didn't know we come to save us, Lord, to take our sins away. Our eyes was blind, we couldn't see. We didn't And say it was, that while they were there, the days was fulfilled for her to bring forth. And she brought forth her son, her firstborn, and wrought him in a barry coat, and laid him in the manger, for there was no room for them in the inn. And they were in the same countryside, herds, biding in the fields, and keeping guard over their flocks by night. And say an angel of the Lord come to them, and the glory of the Lord glinted round about them, and oh, they were sad glyphed. And the angel said, Benny be glyphed, for I bring you good tidings of my joy to the hell world. For there is born to you this day, in David's tomb, a Saviour, for his anointed Lord. And here is the token for you. You'll find the bear round in a barry coat, lying in a manger. And oh, what hints! There was with the angel a throng of heaven's hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heights, and on the earth peace, good will to men. <laughs>
service. This is our first ever virtual service. This obviously is a little different to last year, but we are happy that we can we can still work together to bring this to our community. We are here to share this story of Jesus, the baby who was born on the first Christmas. Around 2,000 years ago, when King Herod ruled, ruled Judea, now part of Israel, God sent the angel Gabriel to a young woman in northern Nazareth. Her name was Mary, and she was engaged to marry Joseph. The angel Gabriel said to Mary, Don't be afraid, God has been very kind to you. Mary was very surprised by this and wondered what the angel meant. He will give birth to a baby boy and you will call him Jesus. He will be God's own son and his kingdom will never end. Mary was very afraid, but she trusted God. Joseph was worried when he found out that Mary was expecting a baby before their marriage had taken place. He wondered if he should put off the wedding altogether. Then an angel appeared to him in a dream and said, Don't be afraid to have Mary as your wife. The angel explained that Mary had been chosen by God to be the mother of his son and told Joseph that the baby would be named Jesus, which means saviour, because he would save people. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel had told him to do and took Mary as his wife. At this time, the land where Mary and Joseph lived was part of the Roman Empire. The Roman Emperor Augustus went, wanted to have a list of all the people in the empire to make sure they paid their taxes. He ordered everyone to return to the town where the families originally came from and enter the names in the Caesars there. Mary and jo Mo Joseph traveled a long way about 70 miles from Nazareth to Bethlehem. Because that, because that is where Joseph's family came from. Most people walked, but some lucky people had a donkey to help carry the goods needed for the journey. Joseph and Mary travelled very slowly because Mary's baby was due to be born soon. When they reached Bethlehem, they had problems finding somewhere to stay. So many people had come to request their names in the census that every house was full and every bed was taken in all of the inns. The only shelter that they could find was a stable with the animals in this poor place. Mary gave birth to Jesus, the Son of God. Jesus' bed was the manger that the animals ate their hay from. In the hills and fields outside Bethlehem, shepherds looked after their sheep through, through the long night. As the new day began, suddenly an angel appeared before them, and the, sky, and the glory of God shone around them. The shepherds were very, very scared, but the angel said, Don't be afraid, I have good news for you and everyone. Today at Beth, in Bethlehem, a saviour has been born for you. You will find the baby lying in a manger. Then many more angels appeared, lighting up the sky. The shepherds heard them praising God, singing, Glory to God in the highest and peace to everyone on earth. When the angels had gone, the shepherds, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem to see what has happened. So the shepherds went to Bethlehem and found Mary and Joseph. The baby Jesus was lying in a manger as they had been told. When they saw him, they told everyone what the angel had said, and everyone who heard the story was astonished. Then the shepherds returned to their sheep, praising God for sending their, his son to their saviour. Yes, when Jesus was born and a brand new bright star appeared in the sky, some wise men in faraway countries saw the star and guessed what it means. They set out to find the new king and bring him gifts. The wise men followed the star towards the country of Judea and when they got to the capital called Jerusalem they began to ask people where is the child who is born to the king of the Jews? Herod, the king of Judea, heard this and it made him very angry to think that someone might be going to take his place as king. Herod sent for the wise men to come to him. He told them to go on following the star until they had found the baby king.
He said, when you have found him, let me know where he is, so that I can go and worship him. But Herod did not tell them that he really had an evil plan in mind to kill the baby king. As men followed the star towards Bethlehem, it seemed to stop and shine directly down upon the place where Jesus was. They found Jesus with Mary. They bowed down and worshipped him. The wise men spread the gifts they had brought before Jesus. The gifts were gold, frankincense, and myrrh. The wise men then returned to the east by a different route so that they could avoid King Herod. Herod realized that he had been tricked by the wise men. He was furious and gave orders to kill all the boys aged two or younger in Bethlehem and the surrounding area. This was to try and kill the new king as his plan had failed. Angel appeared to Joseph in a dream. Get up, the angel said. Take Jesus and Mary to it and escape to Egypt. Stay there until I tell you, for Herod is going to search for Jesus to kill him. So Joseph with Jesus and Mary left during the night and fled to safety in Egypt. This was the beginning of Jesus' story, a story for, for more than 2,000 years ago, yet a story well known in today's world as, well, a child born through no fault of the Lord from such humble beginnings forced to flee their country as a refugee in order to live safely. It was on a starry night when the hills were bright, earth lay sleeping, sleeping calm and still. Then in a cattle shed, in a manger bed, a boy was born, king of all. But the darkness has not understood it. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone 
was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet, to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Amen. Hello everyone, a very Merry Christmas to you. This year has been a very different year because of COVID. And many of us have put up our Christmas decorations earlier than usual. And I think we felt the need to cheer ourselves up. Well, I bought an artificial tree, but would I be able to assemble it? Would the lights still work from last year? These were questions, but also, where was my nativity set? I took out my two bags full of Christmas decorations, tin soles, baubles, looked through them. And then I found this set from Palestine. Here it is. There's Mary, dressed in her green robe. There's Joseph sitting here. There's a donkey. That they came in with, with and took from Bethlehem, from Nazareth. And then with the shepherd and the sheep. There's a rather magnificent looking shake, and that's like a, a wise man with edge. The crib scene, the crib's there. But could I find the baby? I looked and I looked, but nowhere was it to be found. It's rather like the, the story in the, the New Testament of the woman looking for her lost coin, and she hunts and hunts for it. I was like that and couldn't find the baby, the most important character of all in the story. And you know, sometimes I think Christmas is like that. We get caught up in so many different activities. We go to the supermarkets, the village shops, we buy in enough food to feed an army. We wait for all the, the vans to come with the, the things we've ordered online. There seems to be so much to do that we forget the reason why we're doing it, why we're celebrating at Christmas. We lose sight of the most important character of all, the baby born in the stable, who had grew up to be the saviour of the world. And this was God's love letter to humanity. In all the rush of this Christmas season, let us remember that tiny, vulnerable baby in that drafty stable. We may have overlooked him this year. Maybe it's been for a number of years we've overlooked him. But he's there, knocking the door of our hearts, waiting for us to open and let him in. I wish you all a very Merry Christmas this year, a peaceful and a joyful one, a good and a meaningful one. And I did eventually find the baby. So there we go. The baby's on the night now. 
The set is complete. Have a very good Christmas. Have our prayers of intercession let us pray holy child of Bethlehem whose parents found no room in the inn we pray for all who are homeless holy child of Bethlehem born in a stable we pray for all who live in poverty holy child of Bethlehem rejected stranger we pray for all who are lost, alone, all who cry for loved ones. Holy child of Bethlehem, whom Herod sought to kill, we pray for all who live with danger and all who are persecuted. Holy child of Bethlehem, a refugee in Egypt, we pray for all who are far from home. The Holy Child of Bethlehem, in you the Eternal was pleased to dwell. Help us to see the divine image in all around. Amen. <laughs>
May the news of the angels fill your hearts with joy. May the star that guided the wise lead you to the truth of understanding. May the witness of the shepherds affirm in you the message of the Gospels. And may the presence of the sacred baby bring you peace and joy this Christmas. And may God this Christmas bless you, comfort and inspire you as you journey into another year. Amen.